This brief video simply demonstrates how to clean the cord buttons on a cue cord because just like any remote control that uses those carbon contact buttons, they get dirty, the carbon wears off, the contacts get carbony, and so it, you just got to clean them. And the way you know when it needs to happen is when you poke buttons and you don't get a good response. Sometimes it's like you got to feel like you're smashing down on it to get a cord to play. And uh, that's, a, that's your first clue. <laughs> so, okay, step one, turn it over. So make sure there's no cartridges in it to get in your way and you don't have it plugged in. So I just flip it on over. Now mine, you can ignore these. That's, they're just little Velcro pads. They don't mean anything. The, the screws are all hiding down in holes all the way around the cute cord. And depending on the head of the screws, because I noticed that they're not all the same, um, I have two different screwdrivers to, to f fiddle them out of there. Um, these are Japanese industry standard screwdrivers because I learned that being a Japanese device, these work better on these screw heads. Um, I was stripping them out with regular old Phillips like Craftsman. <laughs> so, okay, so in we go. Find the screw head and get started with it. Um, and I'm going to probably not show every single screw. I think we'll probably wait on that. Yeah. And the first time you do this, you know, when they're factory screwed in, they're snug. Okay, let's see if I got, not yet. Usually I do this over in the kitchen where I have better light <laughs> and have a nice countertop, but I'm doing this for this video. There we go. So you can see, uh, little tiny screws. There's going to be a bunch of them. Let's let's just go around and I will edit for time. Okay, I take I took all the outside screws. I bet you that's the hardest part of this whole job is getting the outside screws out because it's hard to see down in there. They can be really tight. They tend to not want to just come on out. You flip it over, you dump them on the floor, stuff like that. So one by one, take the screws out, set them aside. Now, you, you go to take this apart. Be, be mindful. Be mindful. Don't just yank it because there's a speaker. There's a, there's a wire here for the power supply going into the boards. That has to come off. And, I'll, and so it's just yank on this thing, not too hard, but just give it a good yank. Um, and out it comes. It's going to go back in, and they go in and out pretty easy. <laughs> and so, okay. Oh, there's another screw. Told you. These screws, they're, the, they're just the hardest thing. They, get, they just stay in the case. Okay, I'm going to set this aside so that it is not in our way. And we're getting close. Let me get, move the alcohol out of the way. The next step is more screws. We're going to take this board out completely. This board here, the one that the, the cartridge connects to, yeah, that one's got to go. Notice it has like a blue connector here. Let's pull that out. It's just a ribbon cable, and I grab on both sides down at the, at the base of the ribbon and give it a tug, tug. And that's all you do. See, and it just comes right out. Let that flop. I have another one over here. Get my fingers in there and give it a tug. Give it a tug. <laughs> there we go. And this one, another one, give it a tug. And this one, give it a tug. Okay. Now we have a little connector here. Give it a tug. <laughs> this connector, yeah, it's got to go as well. It Sometimes they're very tight, by the way. And I have been known to, to get a tool like a little screwdriver and, and help me pry it because sometimes my fingers, it's just awkward, just real tight space. Okay, so we don't have anything more connected to this. We just have several screws holding it in place. So let's get after those. And I like to put the screws in different little, I don't know, 
screw sets in my bowl over here. And my bowl is magnetic because I have dogs and I am clumsy and I have been known to actually just sort of dump that all over the floor and I don't when I don't want to. Okay, this screw has a bigger head. A bit uh, is a bigger screw head than this one, the others, so I need to use this screwdriver. And it's a little stripped out. Some of mine are stripped out because, like I said, I used a Craftsman screwdriver on them before I knew about the Japanese industry standard. And so, you know, I suppose I could go get new screws, but I haven't done that. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take that out. And I don't want to use the, 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 the bigger head on the ones that don't need it. I don't want them all bunged up. I think I only have like two heads that are all messed up. And we're making good progress. There's only like two screws left, I think, on this board. There's more to come. <laughs> okay. And I do not touch these ones. Just don't mess with them. Don't need to. Last screw. Okay, at this stage, this board is ready to come out. Notice it has something they call a key. This little roundy space here, that is just to help you p place it properly when it's time for it to go back. That helps line things up. So that's handy. So th that's what these are the screwing places, right? So when it comes time to put it back in, you're just going to set it on top of those screwing places and you've just got that as a key and it just helps you know keep it neat and nice set this aside I'm just piling it on top of the the uh, bottom of the case we now have the the actual button board coming up notice it has a million screws and that's all we got to do now is take those screws out <laughs> lots of screws to get to the actual thing that has friction on it and wears out and gets dirty. So it's too bad, but that's just the way it is. I wish that they had made some kind of access on the face of the, you know, on the, on the face so we could get at this without taking anything up more apart. But nay. I guess they figured nobody would actually use these guys enough that they would get dirty. <laughs> but I love my cue cord. So we're making good progress, taking out all our screws, putting them where they go. Notice this board is underneath the lip of this board. Um, first time I did this, I took this board off. I was so nervous. I thought, oh, no, oh, it's got to come out straight. No. <clears throat> uh, you don't have to take this out. You can slide these parts underneath it, no problem. Okay. We're getting there. Yeah, and if you were to ask me, you know, what's the number of the screwdriver? I don't know. I bought a kit and I just grabbed the one that fit. I, 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 so I don't know. Okay, now this board is ready to come out. Notice it has, it has these offsets for, for screws and those offsets are going to help us, you know, line this back up. And right there, there's a, there are two keys that also help just line it up. So you don't have to worry too much. I'm gonna pull it up. What am I missing? Did I miss a screw? It feels, feels like it's really tight in here. Oh, yeah, I did. Look. <laughs> so that's, that's a good one. If it feels like it won't come out, don't horse it. Don't force it. Look for the screw you missed. We'll, we'll leave that in the video. <laughs> okay, see, it comes out easily. Pull it out. Now, this is the board you're going to want to clean. Because this is the board that comes into contact. All these little round dots are coming into contact with the actual buttons that you push on. 
So let's let's see if we can get a good close up. I'm going to go slow for the sake of focus. Yeah. Yeah, okay, that's not too shabby. You can see they got the the electricity is going to run through those. See that little grid pattern? Dee 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 dee. Well, what actually makes the contact is when it touches this conductive surface down here. When that button gets pressed, it pushes this conductive material against the this grid and voila contact and that's how the thing works so these buttons tend to wear down it, they, you know it's carbon it gets dusty and it gets on these things it might not be obvious well and I've cleaned it recently but uh, yeah the carbon gets left behind which can leave um, can, if, it, if enough of it's left behind you're going to get the button playing all the time because the contact is never broken. It's as if you're always holding the button down. Um, these carbon buttons, they get kind of cruddy and they need cleaned as well. So what I end up doing, well, mine, I've done this so many times that the, the carbon on mine is no longer carbon. See, mine are silver. I've actually painted them with conductive paint because they, they actually got worn down to the point where they had like little little bumpy ridges on them and I could not get a good contact. But the paint is not a great solution. The paint, let's see if I can get close. See that little chip on there? It's a little half moon feet look. Yeah, the paint doesn't stay on forever. It'll chip off because this is all a bendy, rubbery kind of thing and it's silicon. And as a result, sometimes those paint chips will fall on the board and you get a weird sound going and it's time to take it all apart and then that just sort of flakes off and you paint it again but most folks don't get to that stage most folks just need to clean it and so we're going to demonstrate that now okay a little bit of rubbing alcohol or electron electrical cleaner you know something that will evaporate quickly and and just clean so I put it in a little bowl for just to have some handy and then get this out of my way. Okay, now I have a little bowl. I just use Q-tips because um, that's what I happen to have. There are fancier ones of these where the co cotton on them is really uh, firmly attached. Q-tips, no, they're not designed for more, much more than you know, one-shot use. So you put, you get your alcohol on there, and you pick this little guy up, and one by one, you go wiggity, 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 back and forth and back and forth. You're just scrubbing on them with the idea that you're, oh, boy, I have cleaned it recently. So you just go back and forth and back and forth. I'm looking for one that's actually dirty. Because when you do this and they're dirty, let's see if I got some up here. It comes off black on the on the Q-tip. Oh, I did clean it recently. Da, da, da. Here we go. Starting to show some some just minor bits of black. Probably my favorite chord. Probably the G chord or the C chord. Yeah, it's just starting to get a little tiny bit of black on here. Um, It'll be a lot darker on a unit that hasn't been cleaned recently that gets a lot of use. I have been, the first time I did this, I think I threw away probably 10 Q-tips, you know, because they just, it gets black and black and black and black and black and then you got to go and get another one and you just keep going. You just do this until it comes off clean and there's nothing left on these little contacts to become a problem. Okay, now. That's them. You're going to also want to do something with your membrane. Sometimes these membranes get sticky. You know, you go to push them down and they don't pop back up. So if that's happening to you, if they come up sluggishly, take your, your little membrane and wash it with some dishwashing soap. You know, on this side, because what you're doing is you're saying, you know, what happens is over time, these start to weep oil, and they just get tacky, they get gummy, they get sticky. Clean that up. Um, and then 
Then you're going to take your Q-tips with your alcohol and you're going to clean the black contacts on this side. Now I'm not going to because it's silver paint and I just don't want to mess with it. But you just, same as you did over here, you're just cleaning them up because the same carbon that, that got on here is, you know, dusty over here and you just, you know, just get off the loose stuff. So when all of that is done and you've, you're, you're now ready to put it back together. And it's like, whoa, can I get it wrong? Well, you could, but remember that your buttons have embossed, uh, the whole top row are embossed, and so that's your clue. Remember, your top row is here, and if you don't remember, you can flip it over and look. But yeah, that's where they're going to go. And down it, and scooch it underneath this, this uh, circuit board here, and use these guides to get it into place. And make sure that you pushed it all through the, you know, the, make sure that they go through their little holes. Kind of get it all pushed down. Now you're ready to put this guy back. And he's also <coughs> going to go under. Voila. And if you forget, let's say you're like, oh, which way did it go? Well, this guy is on the outside. That's a that's you know a rule, but there it's also got these keyed areas. See how that's going to fit there? If I try to put it here, it doesn't work. There's just no way, no way to get it wrong. So down it goes, and now it's time to screw it all back together. <laughs> and I don't think I'm going to record that. Well, maybe I will. I, I'll, I'll edit it out. So we just one by one get all our screws in place. The screws, uh, and if you don't remember, these white circles surround where the screws go. And it doesn't matter what order you put them in. I just sort of grab and go. Um, the white circles are less obvious on this particular board oh, down here. They're just not real obvious. They're there, but subtle. So, okay, there's that one. And so, yeah, if you know somebody who's, who loves to use a screwdriver, <laughs> you know, enlist their help because that's, it's all about screws. It really is. It's only a teeny weeny little bit about, you know, electrical connections and, the cl and then cleaning. And I suppose if I did this for a living, I would have maybe uh, magnetic screwdrivers to help me hold on to this stuff. Because they are tiny. They're tiny. Make my hands feel really clunky. Okay, I got one more right under the wire. See, and that's another reason I like to keep them in separate little piles keeps me honest. I don't like to get all the way to the end and say, what do I do with this screw? Okay, first one's in, ready to put this one back into place. And it's just nice to remember that they, they tend to, you know, put the boards back to back. And you always, can you also can remember that this is where you plug in your cartridges, right? So it's going to go here. And and back here, right? Because you're going to line it up with these these wires and things. So you just kind of find these offsets. This is where the screws are going to go. You set it down where the screws are going to go. And that's it. Remember that key I, s I mentioned? There it is. Um, with the screw thingy ready to go, time to screw it in place. One. <laughs> There's just so many. Yeah, you know, if they had just a bezel on the front, 
that could pop off that would let us take out the membrane? Wouldn't that be sweet? Oh, lordies. Oh, God, I would love that. Okay, now this screw is not screwing back in. That is a little, oh, oh yeah, that's the one that needs the bigger head. I have one large-headed guy. Is that this one? I think so. The screw is actually slightly larger than the others, and so it fits kind of tight. You will probably not have that experience because you didn't strip out heads. <laughs> but I noticed the screws are different from cue cord to cue cord. I've taken a couple apart and some of them um, have copper and some have like stainless steel. And so there's no telling what's going to be inside yours. <laughs> I think it varies depending on whether it was um, put together in Korea versus... China. But I don't really know. Well, again, the wires can get in your way a little bit. You just got to tell them, no, 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 back off, back off. Get your screws in place. And you don't have to screw them down uber, uber, uber tight. Just snug, because it's not like it's going to be getting a whole lot of friction. It's just to hold the boards neat and nice. Okay, time for ribbons. So remember how we just pulled them out? We're just going to push them in place. Get your fingers on both sides and press with fairly even pressure all along the way. Um, it, it, it's a snug fit. I, I do the, the white one first just because it's so big. I'm going to rotate this so I can grab. Okay, and it just snugs right down. Same with this one. Get it in. Get it aligned and then snug. Scooch it. Same with this one. Snug. Yeah, it feels good. And scooch it. And if, and it, you know, I don't know what else to say. It either fits or it doesn't fit. <laughs> Then you snap this back down where it was, align this and snap it down. Mostly, do your best to, to, to put all your pressure on the plastic casing so the wires themselves don't get all bunged up. Okay, we are ready. Now usually we have one more connect cable to put on. Um, and a lot of times what I'll do is when I get to this stage, I'll, I'll attach it. And this is, this is the power supply con cable. And I can't really show you because it's not long enough to show. But I'm s s pushing it down just the same way I did all the others. I think. I think. Did I get it turned around? Oh, oh I did. I was like, why isn't that working? Um, so... Yeah, because they're keyed. It has like a flat edge on one side and a rounded edge on the other side. So there's no way to put that in ba backwards. I just now tried and failed. Okay, now we're ready. Slides together. We are ready to put our screws, our final screws back in place. Usually at this stage, I wait and hook up the power supply. Um, in your case, it might be batteries. Get your power going. Turn it on and test it. <laughs> test it to make sure. So, uh, cords. And I usually go and test every single one because I've cleaned every single one. Um, I haven't messed with any of these guys, so I don't, I don't worry too much about them. Um, it, if I had somehow messed up and forgotten the power, it wouldn't have t come on. If I had forgotten any of those cables, it wouldn't be working right. So yeah, just give it a nice thorough test out and see that it is in fact working just hunky-dory. And then you can flip it over and put the last screws back in. 
I don't think you need to see me do that, <laughs> but we can. Let me unplug, just because I don't like that around me when I'm working. Now, I have actually lost a few of these guys, so because of that. Um, so I don't have as many as probably you do. I think I'm missing one. There we go. But see, that's all. That's what you got to do. And I don't, I'm not going to waste more video by, you know, forcing you to watch me screw all of it back together. But that's basically it. <laughs>